and a very good afternoon to all of you and welcome on our sunset safari. And as James has explained in his usual succinct fashion, you are on a live safari here from the middle of the Greater Kruger National Park, more specifically right on the western edge of Juma. My name is Jamie and this afternoon Viam is on camera with me and we're starting off both. It's your first afternoon back at work, isn't it Viam? Yeah. So we're starting off our first afternoon back at work in the best possible way. As you can see, it is a little bit grey and gloomy, or perhaps you can't see, and the reason you can't see is because, there we go, it's a little bit grey and gloomy that's been drizzling on an awful day, which means, of course, we do have our roofs on to make sure that none of the equipment gets wet. It is beautifully designed in a way that redirects the water onto the driver. It's perfect. Vian, work of art. Well done. <laughs> and, of course, we are sitting with the beautiful boys who are having a jolly good cuddle this afternoon. It looks very cosy there. I am told that it's 27 degrees centigrade, which is 80 in Fahrenheit. I, I beg to differ. It's a little bit chillier, which means that our lions are quite happy to cuddle up next to each other, use each other as pillows and blankets and all sorts. That doesn't look like a very comfortable pillow, though, I have to say. The hock of the male lion that he's lying on. But that's definitely Tignor. I'm not sure about the other male. But for those of you that are perhaps new to these live safaris, these are... Aww. Hey buddy, giving each other cuddles. Uh, these are the Birmingham boys, which are the dominant male lions of this area. And over the course of the last few months, we've watched them come in as interlopers to becoming the dominant pair in this particular section. And one is definitely Tino. That's Tino over there. Now, oh, it's not just us out here, as James explained, and there's some exciting things happening with Byron on foot. Let's go and see what's happening just outside the camp that we live in. It is indeed a lo lovely living out here in the wilderness and of course this male lion absolutely agrees as he has a jolly good scratch and sticking his tongue out the satisfaction of having such a jolly good scratch. Hey mister, it's very clearly in Fumo. <laughs> You've got an itchy elbow there by any chance. Somebody's hungry, saggy belly. There you go, there's the tongue. All of our lions do that when they scratch. That is exact same thing, the tongue coming out. Oh boy, you've opened it up again. Properly opened it up, it looks like. Now this is Mfumo, one of the Birmingham boys. Earlier we mentioned the fact that it was definitely Tignor with him. He seems to have opened up an old wound that's on the side of his face. Uh, we've watched him for months with that wound healing. And it seems as though he's done it damage once again. Obviously the infection, I, I guess, the infection hadn't fully cleared up, so it was bursting open. Shame, mister. That looks uncomfortable again. Absolutely astounding. <laughs> That's a guari bush. Don't lick the guari bush. Amazing the resilience of these creatures and their immune systems. Well, we've arrived with perfect timing, because it's just as our two boys are thinking about getting up. Nice big yawn. Showing off those teeth, and there's been some serious licking and scratching, so I think our boys are planning a planning it as time to go and head out. I wonder which way they're going to head. There you go, making sure all the claws are clean. Tinior's scratching now. There you go, he's cleaning the claw sheaths. I'm um, just listening carefully while we're here. I've just heard some kudu alarm calling, and I don't think they're alarm calling at the lions. So there's an antelope bah barking somewhere behind me and I suspect I saw male leopard tracks coming onto the reserve I sus there's a good chance it could actually be Tingana wandering around so we'll keep an eye out for him as well and keep listening to see whether there are any more alarm calls I don't want to go rushing off and leave these lines because they're most definitely going to be up, up and about soon and I'm hoping that before the end of our sunset safari they're going to give us a roar And welcome to Alora, who's obviously been enjoying some of our better sightings. Laura, you wanted to know, and I must say I was very very jealous of FW's sighting in this particular instance. He wants to know whether or not this is the line that the chameleon was crawling on. I could be wrong, and please correct me if I am. I think that line was in Fumo. So then, yes, now this is Tino at the moment. He's having a jolly good yoga pose. What? That whole sentence didn't make sense. <laughs> He's having a jolly good yoga pose. <laughs> Sometimes takes us a few moments to get back into the swing of things when we've had a break. Sorry, um, the line on the right, I think, I think, 
was the line with the comedian. I didn't actually, obviously I saw the sighting, I didn't actually, wasn't there. Oh, another big yawn. But I'm pretty sure it was in Fumo, but correct me if I'm wrong. Might have been in Fumo, it might have been in Sugu. I don't know. I think it was in Fumo, though. Shame boy. You can see licking the side of his paw, and we've noticed him doing this a lot. He still worries at that the face injury. I think it is sore. Oh, apparently it was in Fumo. Goody. So I didn't, I'm not completely mad. It was in Fumo. That had the tiny chameleon. And for those of you that are wondering what on earth we're talking about, that is a truly extraordinary, extraordinary sighting. Oh, oh. <laughs> Hair drab. Male lions are so often, are actually often more affectionate than females towards each other. There's a lot of bonding that goes into the coalition, keeping the coalition members tightly grouped together. And it's important. They risk their lives for each other. They die for each other. So it's important to be very fond of your buddy, even to the point of sitting on him. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to get moving. I'll take care. You wanted to know. <laughs> How far we are from these boys. Oh, Hold on, sorry. Brotherly cuddles. It's nice to see the side of them. Another big yawn. You being very cutesy this evening. I just want to go and scratch his belly. Uh, sorry, take take care. Actually, that brings me very, very neatly to your question. You want to know how far away we are? A little bit further than we were earlier. I've stopped here just to see which way they decide to go. We're probably about hmm, 60, 70 feet away from these lines. So not far at all. It is important to remember that they are wild, so I would never actually go up and give one of Jolly Good Belly Rub because he really wouldn't like that and he'd probably eat me. So they are completely wild, but they are very, very comfortable with us in the presence of the vehicles. So that means that we can get right up close and personal to them without bothering them. I was listening to another car somewhere. Look at that. That was such a stunning pose those two adopted. Beautiful. So we're not in any danger from them. They're not going to jump into the car. They don't see us as food. And they don't necessarily, they don't see us as a threat. However, now is right about the time, and that's why Byron's gone home, when human beings should no longer be on foot. During the day, if I were to walk up to them, they would run away or sit and watch me and growl. But they certainly would, 99.9% .9 of the time, not attack. But at night, it becomes a lion's domain. Oh, hello. It be sorry, I'm saying hello to one of the other vehicles that's just come in. Um, it would certainly be a very bad idea to go walking on foot because night is when lions are king. Are you planning on moving at all? Or are you just going to let him fool or wander off all on his own? Bit of a lazy start this evening. <laughs> he looks... Tinua's standard expression is disgruntled. I think it's the lip scar. <laughs> I think it's the, the lip scar. It gives him a slightly raised lip on his left side. And then it gives him a disgruntled look. Now he's got the hooded eyes. He wants to go back to sleep. <clears throat> hey, boy. Right now he just looks thoroughly unimpressed with the idea of actually moving anywhere. I wonder where Mfumo's gone. There we go. He's looking up, looking at where Mfumo's gone. Now, Vic, you want to know if they... Oh, he's coming back. How oh, convenient. Vic, you want to know if you think if I think they can hear me. Yes, they can. Absolutely, they can. Uh, they're fully aware of our presence. They don't obviously understand the words that I'm saying, but all animals, to a greater or lesser degree, will understand tone. So, much, much in the same way that we, we understand being shouted at in any language, so will a male lion. I'm sorry, I'm trying to work out what on earth is in my car that's making a noise. There's, there's something living in this vehicle with me. Oh, it's buzzing. Okay, it's buzzing. That's good. That means beetle, not reptile. These are strange sounds coming from close to my feet. Okay, well now I know what it is, roughly what it is. I can ignore it. 
Just didn't want to be find myself surprised by a snake. So while our male lions decide as to whether or not they're in fact going to get moving, let's head back over to the Queen of Juma, find out what she's up to. nothing as spectacular no there's one thing more spectacular hearing than hearing a male lion roar and that's hearing two of them roar at the exact same time how cool was that yes boy thank you <laughs> i was so hoping they were going to roar before the end of the sunset safari and they very kindly obliged look at that face <laughs> perfect hopefully they'll give us one more rendition of that call before the evening falls and it's the end of the sunset safari but that is them for those of you that are new that's them announcing a show of strength to the world and also of course calling to not necessarily in search of a response but letting the rest of the their coalition know where they are and what they're doing not what they're doing but where they are in relation to the others and it gives them a really good way of being able to spread out and patrol properly and make sure that all of the corners of their territory are covered so that no other male lion thinks that it would be a good idea to come waltzing in. And it would be a very bad idea with the four Birmingham boys around. I just wanted to show you something because I mentioned it earlier and it flew out of... Oh, bye! <laughs> wait, wait, wait! <laughs> it came charging, zooming out of the... Oh! Hi. It came zooming out of next to our first aid kit. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> Sorry, dumb beetle. It's okay, you'll be fine. <laughs> he can fly. I'll give him plenty of opportunity to move away before I drive away. But anyway, that was what was buzzing around and making all of that noise. And he flew straight out at my face and he got such a shock. Right. I'm going to sit patiently with our beautiful lions and wait for them to roar once again. While we do that, let's head over to James so that he can say farewell. Oh, apparently, Brent can hear the males responding elsewhere on our reserve. and You can see our males listening intently. And that's good news because it means that we might be treated to another spectacular performance before the night is out. You can see heads up, alert, ears out and listening. And there's all sorts of interesting things that happen when a lion roars. You can hear the members of their coalition responding in turn, essentially doing exactly what they did, and letting the rest of them know where they are. And then you also will get the response of neighbouring rival territorial males that will also be certain that they want to reinforce their own territorial boundaries, which to the west of the Birmingham's is the Majingilans territory. Look, he's listening. What did he hear? Amazing, that intently focused look. What did you see? And remember, of course, I also heard those alarm, alarm calls coming from behind us. Now, I don't know what, the, what caused that. It could be a leopard, it could be another lion, I suppose. There we go, relaxed again. I'm going to give his buddy another head rub. Ah, Shelley, lovely to hear from you. Now, oh, Shelley. <laughs> oh, big yawn. Sorry, Shelley. Hold on one second. I just want to see what these boys are going to do. Uh, Shelley, you want to know how big a lion's paw is? The answer is, big as a, is as big as a man's hand. They are absolutely massive. And they're very, very large indeed. And when we have a chance to, if you keep watching, we'll show you what male lion tracks look like. And you can see them. If I spread out my hand, that essentially encircles the size of a lion track on the ground. So they are, they have absolutely massive feet. Once again, Tinho showing reluctance to move. He basically just kind of wanted to go and lie on him for more and relax a little bit more. But he seems to be... <laughs> abandoned. Oh, big stretch. 
He's making little kitty cat noises, which is very embarrassing for a big scary male lion. Making little whines as he stretch, stretches. Let's wait and see if Mfumo calls again. As soon as Mfumo starts, then Atinio follows suit. Come on, boy. <laughs> now he just looks a bit hunched over and miserable. He didn't, he wasn't really ready to get up. It's like having a, a morning person and, and a person who's not a morning person combined together. And the immediate activity of the morning person invariably annoys the one that's not. I think Tino's feeling a little bit like that now. He really didn't want to get up. They're both hungry. They're both empty-bellied and they're both hungry. And the question is now whether or not they're going to head off and go and search for their own food or if they're going to go and search for some of their lady friends to go and share a meal. Now, I don't know where the Nkumas are. Obviously, I've been away for a few days, so everything changes while you're away. I'm not quite sure where the Nkumas are. If I had to guess, I'd say Buffles Hook, which is to the north of us. But Tinyo and Mfumo tend to spend a lot more time with the Nkuhumas than the other two members of their coalition do. Dopily dozing off again. Oh, here we go. glad that they did that for us one last time before we reach the end of the sunset safari. For those of you that are perhaps seeing that for the first time or hearing it for the first time, it's happening right here and right now. Isn't that incredible? We can actually feel it when we sit next to the lions when they roar like this. We can feel it through the vehicle. It vibrates up through the floor and I can feel it in my feet and my chest. You can feel it vibrating through. So it really is a truly awe-inspiring sound and it's definitely something that you should watch more of on our tv show at 11 p.m on nat geo wild on sunday evening for those of you of course in the states we will be you'll be able to experience more moments just like this meg yawn tino's thinking about getting up now thinking about it but with great reluctance right well I think that's it for our male lions this evening. Keep watching the damn camera. They might be calling throughout the night. But it is time for Vim and myself to bid you farewell. So thank you, Vim. And thank you to all of you. It's, been, it's lovely to be back. And I will catch up with you tomorrow for the Sunrise Safari. Bye-bye, everybody.